Hi guys, welcome to episode 17 of the Sports Lounge on Elegbeted TV. And there's a very important announcement to be made. If you were in the party at Carroll Road earlier in the season, my advice to you is that the party venue has changed and we're now at Leicester. So you find your way down to Leicester, Jamie Valley's house, because there's definitely a party going on there. Uh, it's really nice to be here again. Um, and as usual, I'm not here alone. I'm here with a very brilliant um, set of people here. Yeah? Let's meet them, shall we? On my immediate left is um, Benjamin. Benjamin, how are you doing? Oh, it's been man. a while I saw you. Like, <laughs> you, went to, you just went to man you to help them out. And that's the I'm nice back one. Yeah, you're back. And how, was the, how was the week for you? Oh, very well, very well. Short one. <laughs> <laughs> the, the professor himself is precious of us. Precious, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. I don't know why they call me professor. They, they give me big name. <laughs> <laughs> it's small <more> dog. <laughs> but you are a professor. You are a professor. <laughs> like the numbers. <laughs> Then well, Messi, Messi scored um, an hat trick um, this past weekend. The goat for La Liga. The goat for Elegueta is also making an hat trick of appearance here on this first round. Elegueta, how are you doing? I'm fine. I, I don't know about goat. So I want to keep me not in the best of all. I'm happy to be here. Well, let's get into it, shall we? Um, Precious, let me start off with you. Let me, at the beginning of the season, Tammy Abraham spoke to God. This is confidential information. He spoke to God. He told God. He said, God, I'm sad. God asked him, what is wrong? What's happening with you? He said, all the Abrahams before me, you love them. You give them a special request. They asked for a special request. Yeah. You, give you made the last Abraham, father of many nations. What about me? God said, okay, it's fine. What do you want? He said, I want to be the man to remove the cause of the number nine shirt in Chelsea. 11 games, 10 goals. Just how well Mr. Abraham did so well. Okay, so I guess Tammy had to sacrifice the UEFA Super Cup. <laughs> <laughs> that was the price he paid for breaking the number nine jersey for Chelsea. So he has paid his dues already, and he's uh, doing he's yeah, doing he's quite well. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I, do, I don't want to dwell on Chelsea, but um, Lampard made a very shrewd decision in that game, benching as for the quarter. It's a decision that a big manager would make. Is Lampard really maturing into one now? Well, I would say till the end of the season. However, Lampard is making some very very bold calls at Chelsea. Jorginho, the assistant captain of the team, was suspended for the match and then Lampard had the balls to drop Cesar Spiliqueta. That's some serious decision. It really is. And then play Rhys James. Rhys James had Wilfred Zaha in his back pocket all through the game. That was brilliant. Like the best dribbler in the league. You just, your first game against and you just held him. It was really brilliant for Rhys James. Yeah. Who's the best dribbler in the league again? Wilfred Zaha, according to the stats. Is that according to that statistics that made the... What's that small? That part. That's what I want to mention. I think that's what I want to mention. See that same statistics. Is that same statistics? Well, the people. For me, I think the people who have who create that statistic have been brain damage. That problem. No disrespect to anybody, sir. But we praise that that guy in in my day. That's what we call Jaga Jaga football. Please, Jaga Jaga football. But let's save him off and look at Frank Lampard a bit. I think sometimes a special people arrive at special times. And I think Frank Lampard have arrived at a very special time. And I said this at the beginning of the season. That could, you, could you say it's a special time? I mean, considering the ban. Like that's, that, that ban is a special time. Uh, everything, you know, like scripture, when the Bible says that all things work together for the good of them that love him and are called according to a purpose. So I think that Frank Lampard is called according to a purpose right now. If there was no ban, Frank Lampard would have bought people. Not Frank Lampard buying at Chelsea. The people behind Frank Lampard and the people next to Roman Abramovich will force his hand to buy players because it's a case of, ah, your mates are buying, you know, go and buy. He would have done that. And then Frank Lampard would be struggling with, should I play these young men or should I play these people? And you know that thing that Mourinho suffered when uh, they bought in Shevchenko? Chef Chef yes. So the club would have spent huge amount of money in the 50s of millions to 60s and 70s and close to hundreds of million. And he would have no choice but to play them. And somebody like Tammy Abraham, who would say, you know, uh, what's it called? Mason Mount. Mason Mount. He would not go to Mansina to produce <laughs> the that he's producing right now. So uh, special time means that. Frank Lampard came in on the ban. So the board, the management, everybody is fighting at uh, the Court of Arbitration for Sports to lift the ban. Nobody is focusing on him. Nobody expects him to do magic because don't forget that since the reign of Roman Abramovich, or you can call it Roman Reigns in the WWE, 
Roman has never had a season where he didn't have to sign players. Yeah, that's so, uh, now that they have a coach who did not sign a player, the, the whole thought process is, how can we put, how dare we put pressure on him when we didn't give him the tools to work? Because what works, the formula that works under Roman Reigns or Roman Abramovich is sign the players and tell them, I've given you what you need, go and deliver. But this time around, nothing like that. And don't forget that these academy players are players that uh, Michael Eminalo, certain Michael Eminalo, and you know stock is gone and that this is what i want to achieve and he's been able to pass this old players into the system and now look at uh, frank lampard building players that are uh, efficient and effective they are not the best dribblers they are not the joko i and robin edwin johnson and the rest of them but they get the job done when they lose yes they lose but they are on the roll and lampard can afford to do anything right now and then another thing you look at the dressing room he doesn't have that kind of big name players that every other coach have had to deal with the yeah, enemies yeah. of this world where senior players will hold the team to ransom and then they get fired there's no really big name in the team i mean and as, as the equator was bench and no, no, because no, it, does no, not no, have, no, it does not have a click, a triangular click or a five-star click before you would have a core of uh, Peter Cech, David Lewis or John, John Terry, Terry or Lampard, Lampard and Drogba and all that. But it doesn't have a click. So it doesn't form a quorum. And in the dressing room, these players knows that all of these kids report directly to the coach. So once they try to set up that their mutiny, like mutiny like the French national team of old or the current Napoli team, there is always one, two, three, a larger percentage to third majority will report back to the coach and say, this is what this person is planning on. So they know that. So he's at, he's at Chelsea at a very special time. And if he keeps winning like this, he's going to pick up one trophy. That's very really nice. Um, moving on to the second major talking point from the EPL this week, um, past weekend. Precious, earlier in the, in, um, on the sports lounge, you spoke about how Brighton and Graham Potter are doing very yeah. well. I think there's somebody you missed out. <laughs> and right now, after 11 games, they're doing so well. Sheffield United. Chris yeah. Wilder, just how well has Sheffield come this season? Okay, um, Sheffield, let's start from not just the ongoings on the pitch. In 2013, a particular survey was released and they said the fans of Sheffield United think about their team at least 110 times every day. And you say we should not call you a professor. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Well, even professors in Nigeria, no disrespect, but you know I don't like professors in Nigeria. I don't like the PhD in Nigeria because it's useless in my opinion. Where do you get all of this? <laughs> I've been in this job since almost all my life now. I don't do this. And you say we shouldn't call you professor. Well, <laughs> Please just go oh, on. So, um, if the average fan thinks about the club at least 110 times every day, it means there is some energy, some form of Twitter Kinetic. inter... Yeah, exactly. The energy will translate onto the players on the pitch. Now, the first loss that um, Sheffield United suffered this season was against Leicester City. Yeah. They played very well. The fans clapped the players off the pitch. However, uh, Chris Wilder in his um, uh, post-match press conference that they said, we played well does not do it for me. So it tells you the kind of standard that he yes, has set for, for the player. The key person for Sheffield United is not the guys on the pitch. It's the manager that they have. He has managed to build a functional system. They play a 3-5-2 um, formation two center forwards. That's very, very rare for a yeah. team that came from a relegation. You know, uh, Bukis had them as one of the teams to go back down to the championship at the start of the season. The way they play their game is not like the regular, traditional championship to Premier League yeah. team. Defend and hope. Exactly. Hope against all, all exactly. They don't play on the back foot. They play 3-5-2, which ordinarily may look like a defensive formation. The duty of the three central midfielders in the team is to protect the back three. So basically, it's like a six at the back. It's like a six at the back when they are defending. But when However, they're attacking, the they don't, range of numbers. Yeah, exactly. They attack in numbers and they don't defend on the back foot. They defend from the front. The second striker is a strategic player. It's not necessarily a centre forward per se. But what he does is that um, when pressing... Is that Mark Goldrick? Yeah, when they, when they are pressing from the front, they press in four. So the two centre forwards, okay? Now, one of the central midfielders and one of the wing backs. So which means that you get a four man up front. It's like um, the Roman Empire when they go to war. Uh, the hatchery stays at the back. The guys that, you know, there is a, a, a certain unit. Those four men press high line. Yeah. So the other, the other guys close the gap. Exactly. So if you beat them, this guy There's another be, block. Exactly. Then there is the, the, the final block at the back who's yeah. like the dogs, you know, the guard dogs. 
there's, it's going to be hard for you to break all of them. Yeah. If it fails, Very it fails hard. completely. But oftentimes or not, it succeeds. Yeah. So their success is based on the technic their technical play. They are not the average um, championship side. They play very well, tactically very, very organized, and they have some balance. I mean, they've scored 13 goals and considered about nine. They are not, their numbers are not in the red. They are doing well at home. And then they have a winnable set of games as well coming up. I think they are going to beat Manchester United in their next fixture. Oh, um, I don't know about that. Well, nobody asked you that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But, this, this, but, this, but, this, uh, <laughs> no, but definitely, the, the numbers are going into predation. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely does not look like they will be But how far I do you think they would? Do you think, do you think they will? I don't, I don't think they are going to finish. Uh, they, they, they will most likely have a top half um, finish. finish. Yes. But I don't think they are going to finish in the Europe. I think it will do them a world of good if they finish outside the Europa League places. Uh, me too, I believe so too. Yeah. Because let's, that would be asking for too much. Let's take a break well, from you guys and let's bring <laughs> Benjamin into the spotlight. Let's go into your specialty. You love women. <laughs> you know you do. So you, you no, feel like, 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 is, like, is, is it that true? Love women. <laughs> would you rather love guys? Oh, no, so they don't. I don't want the. Uh, I love women. You don't want to spend 14 years with you. No, but does that 14 years really work? Doesn't it? Bam. Why are you asking me? Why did you call my name? Babriski guy in Nigeria. Bob, well. Bam. You no, I'm not talking about Bobby Robson. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you, 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 you follow them, the Women's National League. Yeah, and yeah, Akagege. yeah. How did that go? The Super Bowl started on Friday. And that was just a little of what the final would. We had Rivers Angels and Conference Queen playing the final. Bayesa Queen and Adama United playing the third place. And before that, they played in the semi final and they all squared up against each other. That was Bayesa Queen against River Angel. River Angel winning that match 2 0. By uh, Conference and Adama, that one went their own way. Conference winning. Getting to the final on Saturday, there were award. awards for players of the season, goalkeeper of the season, defender of the season, and it was nice. I was there and I catch a glimpse of the fine girls. Why you really went there? Why like, you really went there? Like, well, now we talk that we like. Let me ask you. You talk. Uh, I'm like, yeah, we talk. Exchange numbers. Yeah, like number. football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. In watching that, is there anybody as good as Megan Rapino? Can you say you saw anybody that could uh, play like, like in just the league, like a, in the league? In the league. Oh uh, no, no. I think that it is too much. It's too much, it's eh? It's too much for now. How about Uncocha? For for Uncocha, yeah, Uncocha is a player of her own standard. Like she's just there. We can be talking about people like um, Aziza. It's okay, these are the people who we can look towards. Okay, let me go back to the league. On Saturday they were players of the season. Uh -huh. That's going to <laughs> yeah, let this man break. <laughs> let him read. Well, okay, player of the season, that's um, the Rivers um, Bayesa United player. She was, it seems the jinx are not to score in this Super 4. She, she has been scoring on? all through the league, only to get to the Super 4. No goal. Like, even she was having chances. It just seems the goal and the goalkeeper decided, the goal post and the goalkeeper decided not to let anything pass through. On the third place, she created three good chances. For other players to score, she was the man of the uh, woman of the match, match. yeah. <laughs> and she took like she was just lively. She was everything. Let me not lie to you. Aside watching Bayesa United trash, Adama United 4 0, I was just so specific on her. Do you um, have a number? I'm sure you have, you you have, have, a, you have a picture yeah. for No, we actually yeah. want to call out the show. Oh, well, okay. Yes, I if you have a number, so that we... <laughs> okay. I, I was unfortunately, she didn't give out a number. But you okay. asked. So you attempted to. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's watching the show that's interested in this. I really love to see her picture. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. why you were so um, focused on her. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she won two award actually. Mm. At the woman, uh, oh, player of the season. That, play, attacker of the season and player of the season. For that, she won uh -huh. the player of the um, young player of the season. We are free of the season in Roots Oka for she officiated the final. She's the best. She officiated the final. I was with her. Even when I took a picture with her, I told her, don't give me a red card. She said, no problem. Let's <laughs> she's actually she's actually known as the life saving referee because uh, she had done what's that in mathematics? Yeah, 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 CPR yeah. on the pitch. Yes, she has done CPR for over eight 
players that were dying on the field and they all survived. So they, they call her the life-saving referee. And I, I mean, I'm trying to do get her to come for the EM show so that we would uh, talk about her exploits as a referee and also as the oxygenator. I would love to that. That would be nice. That would be nice. So um, River Singer played the third place. They won 4-0. Their coach also won the uh, coach. Um, the, that's the administrator, Timmy Timmy Ebika won the administrator of the season, coach of Admiral United and Van D. Jacob won the coach of the season. At the final, Confidence Queen, they were the better team. All through the match I watched, they were the most organized team that played that two matches in the final, semi-final, uh, the third place and the final. They were too organized. They had the defender of the season, Florence Alexander. Very fine lady. I don't know why I'm just saying all yeah, this. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> very, very, very pretty good, but... You obviously see the defender being pretty and playing that well. Yeah. She have that good stuff and she played very well, but they lost 1-0 in the final. So, to an experienced River Sanger, you know, with all the ex Super Falcons player and oh, a yeah. coach, Edwin Ocon. They had a few of good things, yeah. Oh, thank one. you, thank, thank yeah, you very much, program. Benjamin. <laughs> thank you for that update. Then, Edafi, before we quickly move on to um, Ayotunde, who is really, really excited to be here, I'm going to let's go to your. Um, your own club that you follow closely as now. Obama came out as the captain of the club. What I'm going to go out straight is, um, is Shaka, was the decision right to strip Shaka? No, 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 no. <coughs> there are so many decisions in Arsenal that have not been right in the last 18 months. First, the decision to, to, to appoint uh, Una Emery as coach is wrong. Uh, now we're running around on the tail of uh, a man who just lost his daughter, Luis Enrique, which I still think uh, is another same of the same as in Venga star. Style, but he's a different coach anyway, might bring well. When the Shaka situation happened, Shaka is not the problem of Arsenal. We all know that that wasn't the problem. What should have happened is what Salas Ferguson did with Eric Cantona in the Crystal Palace Kung Fu kick. You as a team, a team should come, the club should come out with a statement, an official statement, stand by their captain and watch him go. You do not give bullies a chance. Even with the, the player coming out to apologize, you can see the apology. That's not an apology. He was actually explaining what led to him do what he did. But then they strip him off his captain armband and then stop him from playing. I, I don't feel comfortable with strikers being captain of team. The only striker who's led the team and led them well is Alan Shera. Other than that, I've always said that captains don't lead well. Obama Young is not the kind of guy who gets in the thick of action. You want somebody in the depth of your midfield or your defender. I don't like keepers being captain. I also don't like strikers being captain. Obama Young is that kind of guy who, give me the ball, let me play. He just wants to play his football and go. Adding the extra weight of the captain to coordinate the team and lead the team mm -hmm. is not good. It shows a team that is disorganized. Asna is in this area and it will continue continue like this. What I think is, come on, to sack uh, um, Una Emery is six million pounds. To not qualify for the UEFA Champions League, is, we will, the Arsenal team will lose 40 million pounds. So make That's a common true. sense decision. Going into the international break, tell the man to, I don't want to use the word number, I'm telling him to run off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Run off, yeah, run off. <laughs> That, that's it. Uh, precious, quickly. Yeah. We've seen captains from before. We've seen captains now. When I call captain, yeah, John Terry. That's a, that's a leader. That's Roy King. Roy King. Patrick Vieira. Gerard. Vinny Vinny Jones. Gerard. Yeah. Steven Gerard. So, as, as the, as, my young. As the emphasis of... <laughs> as the I'm emphasis, a black clock, man. That's <laughs> what? As the emphasis of captain Shane from people that who actually have See, influence. See, that's a captain. Yeah. You see that man? Yeah, please show. show. That's a captain. <laughs> that is a captain. As the I'm my question what? my question to you is as the emphasis changed from captains who have influence um, recently not very recent though but Thiago Silva and Neymar were called up for um, Brazil national team yes. and Neymar was given the captaincy so now our coaches are saying hey you're my best player be my leader is that what coaches um, coaches are doing right now well to an extent for some coaches yes that's popularity votes yeah popular it's not a popularity context. And in some places, it's the oldest seven player in the club. However, being a captain is much more than that. You are supposed to be an influential player. Peter Crouch recently in an interview accused John Terry of influencing referees as the captain of Chelsea. He said that um, before games would start, the regular thing Terry would do would be to call referees by their first names <laughs> and, start, <laughs> and start asking them questions about their families. Take over their family. questions yeah. about their families. So John Terry, before the team steps on the pitch, has made it difficult for the referee to see anything wrong like in what he's doing on the pitch or whatever his teammates uh, on the pitch 
would do. But that's 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 what the captain should do. Yeah. My job is leading my army to what are we fighting for? Three points. Anyhow, we and get yo, it by the yeah. books is okay. I don't have to lick your whatever your ice cream cone. I don't have to be nice to you. But if I can influence the referee to be soft on 50-50 decisions for my team. I am a captain. Exactly. Like, who is a captain? A captain is the extension of the coach and the board on the field of play. About my hand. <laughs> so this has been brilliant so far. From, let's take a break from football now. So while the um, the heat is coming up strong here in Nigeria, the winter is coming for Ayotunde. Ayotunde, how are you doing? Hello, basketball fans. Welcome to the best of basketball with me, Ayo, on the Sports Lounge, only on Elegbeta TV. You know how we do it, don't you? And uh, hey, y'all got to forgive me for looking like an astronaut right now, because I can tell you one thing, winter is coming and we have to defend ourselves against the White Walkers. <laughs> don't mind me, man. It's pretty cold here in San Antonio. But hey, on the show today, we will be talking about the concept of load management. Um... I don't know how to express how I feel right now because some part of me is very disappointed and another part of me is trying to understand. Okay, so here's the story for those of you wondering exactly what I am talking about. So Kawhi Leonard um, missed the first of back-to-back -back games and that game he missed was against the Milwaukee Bucks and then the very following day, he played for the Clippers against the Portland Trailblazers. And why is it such a big deal that he missed a game? It's the second game he missed. The first time he missed against the Utah Jazz. It was a nationally televised game here in the United States. But then, the bigger one that he missed was against the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, come to think of it, it was going to be a matchup between the reigning finals MVP, Kawhi Leonard, for the Clippers... And Yanis Antetokounmpo, the reigning league MVP for the Bucks. But then, Leonard decided to rest. The Clippers decided to rest him. And so he robbed us of what could have been a preview to a potential NBA Finals matchup. Who? Very annoying. And Kawhi shows up the next night to play against the Portland Trailblazers. It was a loss for one television network. It was a gain for the other television network because ESPN... Did not get Kawhi. And then TNT got Kawhi. And so the concept of load management is what we're looking into. What do you think about it? The NBA came out when they noticed people were beginning to talk about the fact that this so-called best player in the world right now was sitting out important games. And the NBA said Kawhi is truly injured and has a knee injury that he is actually carrying. I'm like, whoa, what is this about? Now, check this out. Just before you think I'm just being pissed and just in case you want me to offer the other side of me which tries to, which is feeling like calming the hell down right now. Here's the thing. Last year, there was a whole lot of injuries to a lot of star players. LeBron James played only 55 regular season games because of injury. He was shut down. You know, we saw injuries to the Golden State Warriors. They, they did not rest players necessarily uh, during the regular season. But when they got into the playoffs, especially when they needed their best players most, Kevin Durant, boom, injury. Klay Thompson, boom, injury. What should have been a three-peat ended up becoming a disappointment because the Toronto Raptors won the NBA title. And look at the Raptors, by the way. Kawhi Leonard, their best player, played only, what, just over 60 games in the regular season. They rested him a lot, and then he came into the postseason, and then he blew everybody apart. One of their casualties along the way was Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid got injured in the playoffs, and could not maintain momentum, and they were duly defeated in seven games by the Toronto Raptors led by Kawhi Leonard. How exactly should load management play out? The Clippers and Doc Rivers, their coach, they were fined $50,000 because the guy came out and said, nah, I don't think it's because of injury Kawhi sitting. I'm like, what the hell is he talking about, for goodness sake? You are the coach. What are you guys telling us? What kind of president are you trying to set doing these kind of things? It's not even fun. It's who cares about the winter anyway? This ain't funny. Calm down. Settle down. Okay. Calm down. Let's be objective. I feel if a player is going to, a superstar is going to miss games because of back-to-back, -back, they need to weigh the games. Which is the bigger game? I don't expect the Los Angeles Lakers and uh, LeBron to be playing against Yanis and the box. And because of load management, LeBron decides to sit out the game against the box and show up for a game 
against the Golden State Warriors as bad as they are right now. No shade, no disrespect to the Warriors. It won't make any sense. Fans pay hard-earned money to watch these games. Those of us on TV, we don't watch it for free. We pay subscriptions everywhere in the world. Thanks to League Pass, NBA League Pass. You cannot be robbing us of excitement just because of some load management. We understand that players need to be kept because already this season we've seen some crazy injuries. Steph Curry may not play again because of a broken hand. Gordon Award of the Boston Celtics now has suffered another broken arm. There's so many injuries already. Yeah, we get it. But it's still the entertainment. There's got to be value. The NBA went down in television ratings last year because a lot of times superstars sat out games. And already this year, um, James Harden was asked what he thought about load management. He simply said, I, I don't care about no load management. I want to go out there and play. LeBron James said, if I'm not injured, why the hell will I sit out games? I'm going to play. As a matter of fact, before LeBron was shut down last year, he actually wanted to play. It was a team that said, nah, we ain't going to be in the playoffs. There ain't no problem. There ain't, there's no reason for you to play. Blah, 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 blah. Yanni said, I'm, I'm here to play. I ain't sitting out games. And Michael Jordan, the GOAT, said, you are paid to play 82 regular season games. So I understand you can protect players, but you got to consider the business side. This is where all the money comes from. And I feel the NBA needs to do a better job in speaking with the 30 teams and agreeing what basis you're going to make players sit out games and all of that. We don't want to watch scrubs playing. No disrespect to them scrubs, but that's who they are, scrubs. I, I'm not going to stay awake and watch scrubs playing. I don't know what you guys think about this topic. It's really burning me so much. Um, just go to the comment section and drop your comments. Let's hear exactly what you think. And that'll be all on this episode of the show. Who knows? Maybe next episode, we'll actually be looking at the injuries that have already hit some players this season and what can be done to reduce these injuries and what have you. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And uh, right now, you know how we do it. I'll be handing you back to the legends in the studio to take the show to another dimension. And until then, it's clutch time, baby. Woo! Winter is coming. Save us from the White Walkers. I'm out. My name is Yesenia. I'm from San Antonio, US. I watch LMA TV. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Ayo. Don't worry, we're sending Jon Snow to you. Like, to like, to like, to like, to like, to like, to like, what do you think about what um, Ayo Tende said about GSW? Um, uh, um, that player power dynamics? Well, player power, I, I think for me, resting a player for big game. In the NBA, I don't feel good about it. Kawhi Leonard is meant to play in the big games. People pay for this and people deserve. And, you know, when you understand that TNT and ESPN, the broadcast is shared in such a way that everybody is supposed to benefit from it. But, I mean, this is not the first time we're seeing player power. I mean, something is happening in Napoli. I don't know if we have the time, but if we don't have the time, maybe next time. We'll, we'll definitely talk about that. Player power is very, very big. We're coming into the era where... Players can pick and choose, you know. But then there are some people who love the game. The, the LeBron James of this world, the Michael Jordans of this world. Once they are fit, they want to play. They, they are like Roy Kane. They are like Eric Antona. They are like Patrick Vieira. But these days, there are some players like uh, your own player, like Paul Pogba, who would rather stay in the Babin Salon than play on the field of play. <laughs> and we've seen a whole lot of all that. But, well, it, 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 it's a mistake. That's why I'll, I'll say it. I think that the Clippers made a mistake. In the way they were picking and choosing this load shedding thing. Some people have been playing 100 and something games before. You just started the season. The season has not even gone anywhere. And you're already picking and choosing which game to play and which game not to play. That's the kind of thing that will make you not to make the playoff at the end of the day. Because to me, I see this as arrogance and it's not really good for the fans. It's not good for the business and it's also not good for the franchise. Oh, thank you so very much, Adafi. Um, one thing I'm going to do. In episode five, I don't know if you get if you guys remember, we made predictions in the Premier League on who's going to win the league. Oh. So I'm going to put you guys again on the spot. Who knew Benjamin? All right. Who's going to win the EPL? It's not Women League. Oh. It's not Women League. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Who's yeah, going to win yeah, the league, yeah, Benjamin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would want Liverpool to win. Why? Quickly. Like the Jinx. I want them to just finally break it. That's that's why. Precious. And it, it Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea and Leicester, whether you like it Chelsea or not, they are, they are in that conversation. And they, they may have a say in the destination at the end of the day, but they are not winning the league. They are winning the Champions League. <laughs> you you <laughs> still maintain <laughs> this? Yes. Okay.
Okay. This this is where I wouldn't call you a professor. Who is winning the league? Liverpool win. Liverpool win the league. Liverpool win the league. And I'll feed down to you. Who is winning the league? I want Liverpool to win the league. I'm a diehard Pep Guardiola fan. I want Liverpool to win the league just for one reason. This club has really come so far. I mean, we thought it was a joke. It's my generation. I saw this team. I saw great players play for Liverpool. Aaron Rush, Mark Manaman, John Barnes, Michael Owen, uh, Son of God, what's his name? Um, Robin Fowler, Steven Gerrard, Luis Suarez, as Alonso, I seen Fernando Torres and Nuno. I've seen everybody play for this team and they've not lifted the title. A Liverpool fan in 30 years have not tweeted or not said something on Facebook or <laughs> Twitter on Yahoo Messenger that they are champions. They haven't. But then we've also seen a Liverpool team with a different, a mean streak this season. Some, some, some games that they ordinarily would lose. Yeah, they call yeah. themselves yeah. mentality giants. Nah, huh? They don't have mentality. They yeah. don't have what we call the cloppage time now. <laughs> there was Fergie time, but now have cloppage, cloppage time. time. That's scoring cloppage time. Group. I think they should win it. But if there is anybody, if there is anybody who can wrestle the chestnut out of fire and beat them to it, it is Pep Guardiola. Pep Guardiola wants to equal uh, Salah. We got seen badly. He wants to win three straight league titles. Yeah, he's suffered defensively, but if he gets past this whole thing and he's still within sight by January, I think he will have to run the uh, other club. Oh, you have, you have it, guys. I don't know whether Liverpool or Manchester City will win the league. As a United fan, it's really horrible to see that it's these two that are in contention. <laughs> but for me... Leicester is going to win the league and I'm going to be at the Vardis party. You are going to do 30 <laughs> push-ups on this show. If Leicester does not With win the league. one hand. Leicester. Leicester, Leicester will win the league. Two hands. No, two, one. Two hands. I'm not going to take one hand. <laughs> two hands. <laughs> well, thank you so very much, guys. We've come to the end of episode I've done my 17. Press up. We could not have got into episode 17 without you. So please keep subscribing. Like, thank you very much. I will see you next week. Hi, my name is Maureen. I'm from Uganda and I watch Elevated TV. Hi, my name is Oscar and I am from San Antonio, USA and I like to watch Elevated TV. Hello. Presently now we get some Ogonga players like this now for inside this very team now and we watch out for players like uh, Super you number know, 10 from inside FC Kunusi and a good player and a better player now presently now because we can stand like this now. Randy Michael Gobi now the cover now from Elegbete TV and there's a cocoa for you like this as a stand.